with us, Michael, for all the, the good that we talked about on Saturday. It was a little bit chalk and cheese today. Well, it weren't flat or bad, if that's what you were going to say. I think we just got beat by a really, really good team, and that's a fact. Um, we played a good side. We were in a good moment, in a good space. Um, you can see why they'd only considered one in seven going into the game. You can see why they scored a lot of goals. I thought the likes of Selena and Luca at times were, were unplayable. Um, they were in a, a really good vein of, vein of form. Um, listen, for me, I don't know how many games we played this season, but comfortably the best side in this league by a distance, by an absolute distance from what I've seen tonight. Um, you know, we've got some big games coming up against sides at the top of the table, the likes of Rotherham and, and Sunderland, and they won't cause us the amount of problems that you know, you know, the, the, this side can do. So, fair play to him. Sometimes you've got to hold your hand up and take a bit of humble pie and go, listen, we've come up against a good side, they're in a far better place than we are at this moment in time. Might have said an odd question, but I'll ask it anyway, in the sense that if you're saying that, do you look at it when it was 2-0 and think, well, that could have been a lot worse at 90 minutes and actually turned out to be? Well, that's why we did what we did at half-time. <laughs> yeah. you know, we, we had to make sure and um, I, I, it was important for me to not come away today sort of losing four, five, six. And, um, you know, that's why we brought Cohen on, who's had a bit of an issue with his knee at half-time, just to try and sort of contain um, the threat that they had, obviously, with Wes Burns. Um, but having said that, we had moments before they scored where, you know, the likes of Liam Cullen, etc., got into great position, didn't, didn't get the shots off early enough, didn't really bat themselves uh, enough in those in moments. And, um, yeah, ultimately, when you, when you don't do that and you're not capable of doing that, you're going to get punished. I can't remember as a commentator not having a game where you've been the manager where I haven't really got too excited until mm. near the end, obviously, mm. with the chance for Anthony. Mm. Well, however good the Ipswich were, does that disappoint you that you didn't create more in an attacking sense? No. No, and, and I don't mean that. I'm not coming at you like, you know, trying to be sort of devil, devil's advocate and coming back at you. Generally, sometimes you just got to go, do you know what? There's a reason why they've spent more money than anyone in this league and probably budget bigger than anyone in this league. And it shows on the pitch because of the quality that they've got. Um, the little box in the middle of the park, we, we did a little bit of work on it. We spoke about it. Um, we knew what was coming. Um, but they do it really, really well uh, and they cause you problems. So um, I knew tonight was going to be a tough night for us. I knew it was going to be a difficult night. Um, we've come out of it, um, certainly with the fact that we can be competitive, if anything. Um, can we do more with the ball? We probably could do with more with the ball. Of course we could, but you know, ultimately sometimes you've got to give the opposition a bit of credit. Is the, the budget argument sometimes hard for fans to understand? I mean, look, they signed 19 players, didn't they, in the, mm. in the summer Ipswich, and yeah. yet supporters still see it as 11 people on the pitch against each other. Yeah, and listen, by the way, I would never use that as a, an excuse, and I'm not in the slightest little bit. I'm actually doing the opposite. You know, they've, they've spent money, and it looks like they've spent money, and you can tell because they're a good side and, and they move the ball well. Um, we are where we are, whether people like it or not. What we've got to do is try and be as competitive as we can in this league. We're not the team that we were last year. There's five or six players missing from that player final. They're not here anymore. You know, we're however many games into the season. But if we can be competitive um, and fight like heck to be in around that mid-table uh, position, um, then, then so be it. That, that, that has to be our aim. Um, you know, if we want to sort of get close to sort of top six, um, then, you know, unfortunately we're going to have to find similar sort of loans that we did last year in the likes of Brennan and Morgan Rogers. Does it need but, a bigger budget? Of course it does, but at the end of the day, if, if that's not there, then, 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 then what can you do? There's nothing you can do about it. You've just got to sort of, you know, deal the, 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 the hand you get dealt with. And, and, and that's not, like I say, that's not me complaining. Sometimes, you know, ultimately, um, you are what you are and you can you can only control what you can control so um as a competitive person hard to take but at the same time you know there's a realization sometimes that ultimately if a team plays really well and you know you're not probably if you haven't got seven or eight players at seven eight out of ten it's going to be a difficult night for us 
Uh, I know, like you said, you're a competitive person, so you don't want to rely on others, but obviously late on, Morecambe conceded 94th mm. minute, mm. so actually that hasn't been as bad a score as it could have been. But just looking ahead to the to the weekend, uh, a game I know from your face now you'd love to be playing in. Mm. Uh, it's an absolute six-pointer, isn't it, against Wimbledon? It's a big game, and, and again, you know, it's, it's almost like bigger picture, you know, and, and, that, and that's always been the case, if I'm being honest with you, because... The one thing that we haven't done this season is, you know, pick up enough points against teams in around us. And, and listen, you're talking about Morecambe because they're the, the one holding that fourth, fourth bottom place at this moment in time. But there's about four or five teams. Like, you know, there's one or two that are going to slip into it that are above us. Um, and, you know, the likes of Fleetwood, the likes of Wimbledon and these teams, they're still fighting for their lives and it's not just about Morecambe. Um, it's really important to stay focused on what we do and we know in terms of points or games that we need to win between now and the end of the season and we've got 11 opportunities to get that. Just finally, you said bigger things. Right at the start there was that a bit of applause, all your mm. players together. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I thought it was a, a pretty incredible moment. It's very mm. rare that, I mean, I'll say I have to be quiet because that's going on as well, mm. but it was a pretty stunning moment, pretty, in fact, quite an emotional moment. Yeah, it did, and obviously, you know, there is sort of bigger things going on in the world than football at the minute, and it, you know, I, I've used the word like humble and being humbled uh, as we were tonight at times, but, you know, the reality is when you see some of the scenes and, you know, read some of the stories, you know, it's scary, really. You know, those people have got kids, and you see, you know, the families and, and what's happened to some of the people over there. It's quite scary, really, and, it, and yeah, sometimes it. It, it, it sobers you pretty, pretty quickly. Michael, thank you very much. Cheers, thanks. Cheers. Be unplugged yourself, Gaffer.